This Get On It Outdoors Tech Tip is presented by BBG Marine Electronics. Discount prices on marine electronics, parts, accessories for your boat, and so much more. Hey Get Limit fans, Todd Driscoll here. I want to share with you a, a tackle tip that I feel like uh, made my fishing more efficient and helped me boat a few more fish in recent years. And that is use of a, a fluorocarbon leader with braided line. You know, there's various uh, benefits to that. Uh, first and foremost, the most obvious one is price. You know, most of us have gotten to use fluorocarbon line for a wide variety of techniques and for good reason. You know, the line doesn't have much stretch. It's also uh, fairly invisible in the water, uh, less detectable to fish than, than other line types. However, you know, price is a big downside. That line's pretty darn expensive. So that's what I see as the first benefit of using fluorocarbon leader with braided line. Spooling up with, with braid on your spool, you know, doesn't matter what type of line you use, the, the braided line is, is relatively inexpensive compared to the fluorocarbon. And using these leaders, you know, I'm only using anywhere from, from two feet to maybe eight feet of fluorocarbon line at a time, so you can quickly see over the course of a year's fishing just how much money that's going to save you. Uh, not only is, is, is braided line a lot cheaper, but the second big reason I see in, in using this uh, fluorocarbon leader to braid technique is durability. You know, I fish 50 to 100 days a year on average, and I very rarely ever have to change uh, the braided line on my reels. If anything, I might, uh, if I'm flipping a lot of abrasive type cover like, like real heavy trees for a month or two, you know, the line might get a little bit abraded. If anything, I'll just switch it around on the spool, but uh, over the long haul, uh, you know, using braided line on your reel spool will unquestionably allow you to save a lot of money compared to spooling it up with uh, fluorocarbon line. Uh, the other thing is, is, is sensitivity. Fluorocarbon line's pretty sensitive, but braided line's even more sensitive. You know, if you're fishing a, a bottom-oriented technique like a Carolina rig or, or a biffle bug, you know, the, the, braid, the main line braid will transmit the bottom composition so much better than that of fluorocarbon. So, so I see sensitivity as another big advantage. The other advantage is lack of stretch. Fluorocarbon line doesn't have much stretch, but compared to braid, braid has zero stretch. You know, it's so much easier to get hook penetration, especially at the end of those ex extremely long casts. It also uh, makes a bait easier to respond how you want it to. For example, whether it's, you know, walking the dog with his air spook, or whether you're fishing uh, uh, lakes that have a lot of aquatic vegetation, submerged aquatic vegetation, fishing either, say, a square bill crankbait, maybe a lipless crankbait over that grass. Fishing a, a, a braid main line helps you more quickly and cleanly rip those baits out of that vegetation which typically triggers those bites. I've experimented with this technique for uh, three to four years. Uh, the problem I had for a while was finding a, a knot that I could trust. I feel like I tried them all, various uh, brands of uh, varieties of uni knots, uh, surgeon's knots. Went through them all, you know, fishing them, and, and I had enough failures of that uh, splice knot. I really didn't feel comfortable uh, fishing this technique in a tournament. Then uh, I actually observed on the internet a line a knot called the Alberto knot. Some call it the modified Albright knot. I experimented with it some. I actually made a special trip to Lake Falcon. Uh, you know, Lake Falcon is not a lake where you really need to use a leader to potentially get more bites, I'd suggest. You know, the water's typically off color and, and the way I prefer to fish falcon when possible is flipping heavy cover. But I thought that'd be the true testing ground for this specific knot. And I spent four days down there, you know, catching literally anywhere from 30 to 100 bass. A lot of these fish four to nine pounds. Most of them with 15 to 35 feet of line out, you know, setting the hook as hard as I could, literally trying to break that splice knot. And in four days of fishing, I never had a failure. So that really told me all I needed to know in terms of moving this knot forward and, and fishing it in a lot of these other lakes, where I feel like it would help me catch a few more fish based on the benefits that we just talked about. So now let's take a close look on how to properly tie the knot. 
Now, when tying the Alberto knot, what you'll do is, is you'll start with your fluorocarbon line. You simply make a loop. And make sure you've got uh, a good amount of uh, tag end here, maybe 8 or 9, 10 inches. Make you a loop right there. And then you'll take your uh, braided line and simply run it through the uh, loop you just made, just straight through one time. And then, again, get you a good amount of tag end here, maybe uh, six inches or so. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, seven wraps away from the loop and then back towards the loop. Uh, right now I'm using a fairly heavy line. I'm using a Iser line, 100% fluorocarbon leader, 20-pound, with a Iser line Spectra braid, 50-pound. So with these heavier lines, I'm going to make seven wraps down and seven wraps back. But if I'm uh, fishing more of a finesse presentation with lighter line, say 15-pound braid and uh, maybe six or eight-pound fluorocarbon leader, I'll go ten wraps down and ten wraps back. But with this heavier line, we're going to go seven each way. So you just start wrapping that braid around your uh, double-length fluorocarbon you just made. Go seven down. And then once you get seven, you'll just make seven back the other direction. And it's a little bit awkward here. I'm trying to hold it in front of the camera. It's not this difficult to tie. But uh, So once I've made those seven wraps, uh, the, the most critical part of this knot is this step right here. You remember we ran that braid through that loop originally? You want to make sure that your tag in line, after you've made uh, seven wraps down and back, goes through the same direction as you originally came through the loop. So I'm going to stick this tag in straight toward the loop that way. You can see both of them coming in the same direction. Uh, at this point, tighten it just a little bit. And then you'll want to wet the line before we uh, cinch it on down. And with the line wet, you just simply uh, pull on each uh, braid and, and fluorocarbon tag end. And you'll want to cinch it down pretty good. I'd recommend... You know, probably 60 to 70 percent of the braking strength. I mean, you want to pull on it pretty dang hard. There it's cinched. You can see it's really clean. The wraps. At this point, you'll uh, simply cut off the uh, tag ends of the line, essentially as close as you can to the knot. You know, you want to maybe leave just a little bit out there, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Same thing with that tag end of the braid. So there you have it, uh, a finished Alberto knot. And I, I do like to leave a little bit of that braid tag in because if you're ever going to have any slippage, it's going to be with the braid. So having that little maybe eighth of an inch tag in there helps you look periodically just to make certain that you don't have any slippage. Again, with this knot tied properly, uh, I mean I've made thousands of casts with this braid to floral leader technique. I've never had a failure. You know, I talked very briefly earlier about uh, leader length, and really, nearly all of my fishing is done with a leader length of, of two to six feet, and that depends on specific uh, type of tech, fishing technique uh, that I'm using. Uh, for example, if I'm flipping or pitching, I'll typically go with a two to three foot leader. Uh, the primary reason for that is, is I found that uh, you know, when you're flipping or pitching, uh, the, the splice knot itself sometimes will catch in the guides when you're when you're not casting when you're flipping or pitching so I prefer with that technique to when I'm getting ready to make a, a flip cast not to have the knot in the guides at all uh, however anytime you're casting you know throwing a crankbait spinnerbait a Texas rig or what have you I found that uh, the splice knot really doesn't decrease casting link whatsoever you know with a cast you, you've got a lot more momentum to get that bait out there and that knot slides through the guides really really well even the micro guides all the rods I use now most of, of the guides are micro guides and, and it really surprised me just how well that Alberto knot slides through those knots when you're casting so then I'll use probably a five to a six foot leader with, with most applications but Flipping and pitching, I make sure to knock that link down to two to three feet so I don't have that knot inside the guides at all. 
So I think, you know, we've covered it pretty well. You know, we've talked about the advantages of using the braid to floral leader. Uh, we've talked about how to properly tie that knot. And I really think if you incorporate this into your fishing, it's going to help you build a few more fish in the end. So until next time, good luck and good fishing. Get a Limit Outdoors, sponsored by Rigid Industries LED Lighting, Seaguar, always the best, Legend Boats, Scentlock, Hills Marine, Buddy Outdoors, Brothers in Arms Game Calls, Low Rants, Find, Navigate, Dominate.